Okay, we're going to look at problem 7-1b, FIFO Perpetual Inventory. The beginning inventory of merchandise at Dunn Company and data on purchases and sales for a three-month period ending June 30th are as follows. And then it gives us our data. Our instructions, number one, record the inventory purchases and costs of merchandise sold data in a perpetual inventory record similar to the one exhibited, I'm sorry, illustrated in Exhibit 3 using the first in, first out method. Okay? And then step two, determine the total sales and total cost of merchandise sold for the period. Journalize the entries in the sales and cost of merchandise sold accounts and assume that all sales were on account. We're going to do the first part of step two. Okay, we're not going to do the journal entries because you did those. Um, you worked on journal entries in chapter six for this, so we're just going to do the first part, determining the sales and cost of merchandise sold. Okay, so again, step one in the first part of step two. So here's our data. The first thing we need to do is decide. So we're looking at April 3rd. We had an inventory of 25 units per unit, 1,200 for a total of 30,000. So we're going to come to our working papers. Pull this one out. And we're going to record all of that in here. So again, we're on problem 7-1B. So I'm going to come up here and circle the B. So I know which problem I'm working on. And the date said April 3rd. And we had an inventory of 25. So our quantity was 25. Actually, we didn't purchase this. So our beginning inventory would go over here under the inventory. So we had 25. And our unit cost was 1,200. And it gave us our total of 30,000. Now, if we needed to calculate this ourselves, we would just multiply these two numbers together to get our total cost. Okay. So now looking back in my textbook, April 8th, I'm going to stay right here on my worksheet and just read from my textbook. Um, that way you don't get a little seasick from the camera. We purchased 75 units. So right here under purchases, we purchased 75 units at 12.40 per unit for a total of 93,000. Okay, so now we're going to keep track of our inventory. Notice our unit cost is different. Okay, we had a $1,200 unit cost here, a $1,240 unit cost there. So we have to keep track of that. So we're still going to have the 25 from above at 1,200 for the 30,000 and then we're going to add in the 75 for 1240 for 93,000 okay now the next one says April 11th we had a sale of 40 units for $2,000 per unit Okay, for 80,000. So we're going to go right here in the middle. We sold 40 units. Now, first in, first out sells, says that that 40 has to be broken up. So the first ones in were these tw 25 that we brought in that we had as our beginning inventory. Okay, so we're going to list that 25 at 1,200 for 30,000. And it said that we sold 40, so 40 minus 25, we have 15 left. Our next level is this coming from this 75 for 1240. Whoops, too many zeros. And if we multiply these two numbers together, we get 18,600. Okay. So now we have to figure out what inventory we have left. Well, first, this 25,000 is gone. Okay, we've used this. That one is, is completely gone. Of this 75 for 1240, we've used 15 of them. So we're going to subtract that, and we get 60. So we have 60 units at 1240 left. So we multiply these two numbers together, 
and we get 74,400. So this is our current inventory. Okay, the next one in our book says April 30th. We had another sale of 30 units. Okay, so the first thing we do is check our inventory. Do we have 30 units in one unit cost? And the answer is yes. So we have 30 units at 1240. We multiply those two numbers together and we get 37,200. We take our 60 units minus the 30 and we have 30 left at 1240. We multiply the two together and we get 30,200. So now this is our current inventory. Okay. The next thing in our textbook is May 8th. We purchased 60 units for 1260. And it tells us that that comes out to be 75,600. So on May 8th, we purchased 60 at 1260. We already have 30, but again, our unit cost is different. So we need to keep track of, of both amounts. Okay, so right now this is our current inventory, those two amounts. I know this is kind of hard to keep track of, and it might be easier if you, you know, kind of draw a line here, excuse me, between your, your calculations. Um, everybody does things differently and everybody learns differently. So for some of you that might confuse you, for some of you it might help you. Um, completely up to you, whatever helps, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and keep drawing the lines on mine because I, I think it, it does make it a little easier to see where those divisions are. So the next thing in my book tells me that on May 10th, I had a sale of 50 units. So if I look at my inventory, excuse me, the first one is 30. So that's where I'm gonna start is my 30 for 1240 and a total of 37,200. 50 minus 30 is 20. So if I look over here, I have 60 at 1260, so I can pull the 20 out of there. I'm going to multiply those two numbers together and get 25,200. Okay, so now when I'm keeping track of my inventory, I'm done with this 30. There's no more of that 30 left. Out of the 60, I pulled out 20, so I have 40 left at the 1260 and if I multiply those two numbers together I get 50,400 okay again I'm gonna draw a line here it, it just helps me visually understand the difference here so this is our current inventory on May 19th we sold some more this time we sold 20 units okay so 20 units, we have 40 at 1260, so we're pulling out 20 of that 1260. If I multiply that together, I get 25,200. 40 minus 20 gives me 20 left at the 1260, which gives me 25,200. Okay, so now this is my current inventory. On May 28th, I had a purchase of 80 at 1260. Okay, for a total of $100,800. Now, if we look at our unit costs, 1260 and 1260, they're the same. Okay. However, we also have to keep track of our items. Okay. So even though our unit costs are the same, we still need to keep these separate. So we still have to list these as two separate items. Because if we think about back to the milk example, even though 
the two shipments of milk cost the same, we don't want to lump them all together because we want the first milk to go out first. Okay. So we're going to keep track of those. <clears throat> so this is now our inventory list. The next one is on June 5th. And on June 5th, we had a sale of 40 items. Okay, so if we look at our inventory, first in, first out, first we have to take care of this 20. So 20 at 1260 is going to be 25,200. We sold 40, so 40 minus 20 leaves me 20. So I'm going to pull 20 out of that 80. And you're thinking, this is dumb, these are the exact same numbers, and you are correct. But again, this first 20 comes out of this 20. Remember our milk, we don't want it to spoil. 80 minus 20 gives me 60. And 60 times 1260 is 75,600. Okay. So now this 60,000 right here, this is our new inventory. I'm sorry, 60 units is our new inventory. The next one is June 16th. On June 16th, we had a sale of 25 units. So we look over here, 60, we're good to go with the whole 25. 25 times 1260 is 31,500. 60 minus 25 gives me 35 left. For a total of 44,100. Okay. On June 21st, we purchased 35. I don't think I gave you enough lines. For 1264. Multiply those together and we get 44 to 40. Okay, again, we need to keep track of both sets of inventory. So we have 35, 12, 60, 44, 100. And then the next 35 that we purchased for 12, 64, for a total of 44, 240. Okay. And then this becomes our new inventory. I'll make sure I give you guys more lines when I upload this document. The last one is the 28th. We had a sale of 44 units. So I'm going to pull 35 from here. And then I had a total of 44, so 44 minus 35 leaves me with 9 from here. Multiply those two numbers together, and I get 11,376. 35 minus 9 leaves me with 26 units at 12,64 for a total of 32,864. Okay, I'm going to draw my lines here. Now, I'm going to calculate a couple totals, okay? So I'm going to pop back over here. I'm going to pretend there's lines here. Sorry about that. Now we're going to say the next one is going to say 30. And these are going to be my balances. And I'm going to find out what is the total cost of my cost of merchandise sold. So I'm going to take this whole column and add it up. And when I do that, I get 310,776. Okay. Now, I know that the balance of my inventory column is not going to come from adding this because it's perpetual, so we kept track of it as we went. So this last number is the balance of this column. Okay. So we have calculated our total cost of merchandise sold is 
And this is our final inventory. Okay. Now, in our textbook, step two, determine the total sales and the total cost of merchandise sold. Well, we already figured out our total cost of merchandise sold. Okay. Now we need to calculate our total sales. So I'm going to actually just flip my paper over, and you can do this on any kind of paper. I'm going to go back through. So first I sold on April 11th. I had 40 units. I'm gonna make you guys a column for this. And I sold them for $2,000 per unit. And when you multiply that out, it comes out to 80,000. And then the same thing on the 30th. We sold 30 for 2,000. And again, we multiply that out, we get 60,000. These are April. Again, I'm gonna make you a spreadsheet to do this in. And then we're going to May, May 10th. We had 50 times 2,000, which gave us 100,000. May 19th, we had 20 at 2,000 which gave us 40,000. And then June 5th, we had 40, 2,250, 90,000. And then June 16th, we sold 25, at 2,250, which gave us 56,250. And then June 28th, we sold 44 at 2,250, which gave us 99,000. So now we're gonna add all of these numbers up to give us a total sales. Give me a second, I'll make sure I get you the right number here. Which gives us a total sales of 525,250. Okay, and this is our total in sales. And again, I'll create you a, a section in your spreadsheet to complete that. Okay, you can go ahead and move on to your assignment for this section or you can go to the next step-by-step -step problem. Some people learn better by doing the assignment right after. Some people can move on to the next set of directions. Completely up to you and how you learn. Have a great week.